All right, Dr. Natalie, let's talk a little bit about peppers. Everybody likes to grow peppers in their gardens, right? Oh, right. I mean, I think the tomatoes get the crown as king yes, of the garden. Yes, yes, But peppers are, you know, they're making a push. Uh -huh, we have uh -huh. a lot more options than we, uh, than we used to for a wide range of pepper cultures. That's right. Mm -hmm. And before we get started, peppers and tomatoes, same family, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so if you're a raised bed gardener and... You're, you're serious about your rotation. Grow your peppers and tomatoes okay. in the same bed and then put in a different, uh, different family the next year. But the whole idea of being in the same family gets us thinking about temperatures mm -hmm. and fertility needs and, and things like that. So okay. um, there can be some similarities. They like nice warm temperatures when you put them in the ground uh -huh. and get good, <laughs> good root growth. So they're, you know, can grow them in a similar way in many ways. Mm -hmm. Good deal. I'm glad you mentioned that. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's talk about some options for the large garden and then for smaller spaces. Yeah. So typically we we think of a large bell peppers, or that's the first thing that comes uh -huh. to mind. I'm a sweet, I'm a sweet pepper. Oh, you sweet person. pepper. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and so there are lots of lots of good bells on the market now, whether you like greens which are immature mm -hmm. right so okay. they're just an unripe pepper and most of our green peppers will mature to uh to a nice red mm -hmm. but we still have orange and uh you know some some purple some yellow options I've seen the yellow. yeah okay. and one of the great things about many of our nice productive bell peppers is we get more options with bacterial leaf spot oh. resistance which is a problem. Yes. So, yes. yeah, I can uh, see from uh, from your reaction that that's probably something you see as few pictures and emails of over uh, the course of the summer. Just a little bit. Yeah. Just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, bacterial leaf spot can be spread by seed, and so it's something that often will come in on a transplant mm -hmm. uh, that we buy. But the great thing about resistance is that we can reduce that productivity loss that we'll see off of those um, off of those peppers if it happens to be infected. So, alliance. Red Knight are good options okay. for um, peppers that have resistance to bacterial leaf spot. Those will be green that will mature to a red. Okay. Makate is a nice yellow bell that okay. has good uh, leaf spot resistance. Um, as far as some of the ones that have performed well in my trials, Big Bertha was a, I mean, you know. Yeah, I know Big yeah, Bertha. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I like that name. So it's an yeah. elongated bell. It doesn't have bacterial leaf spot resistance, but it performed well against many of those other newer cultivars. So, those are so it doesn't have the resistance. Big Bertha ah, doesn't, doesn't have bacterial leaf spot. Leaf spot, okay. Yeah. How about that? Okay. All right. Now, sweet peppers, right? Sweet roasting peppers. Yeah. So that's so, what you like. So, um, so if we want to branch out a little bit from our traditional yeah. bells, there are some great. Some people call them Italian bullhorn or Italian yeah. roasting peppers, okay. but we're thinking an elongated, tapered fruit, and that's where a lot of the newer hybrids have been released over the last few years. So, Carmen is okay. a red roasting pepper that's been on the market for a few years. Okay. Um, it's an All-American Selections winner, performs well. Um, Mamma Mia Giallo, I nice, like large, long um, Italian pepper. Um, Corona de Toro, one of my favorites from the trials that I've done, a recent All-American Selections winner is Corinto Giallo, which is a nice it's, you know, not a real large pepper, but really sweet, a little bit of citrusy undertones, beautiful red, um, yellow color. Sorry. Okay, it's yellow. yellow, okay. Yeah, and, uh, and so those are some of, the, some of the newer sweet ones. Some of my trials this year, I'm um, comparing some of our newer F1 Italian roasting peppers with some of kind of our older heirloom cultivars. We're going to be able to see if people can pick oh, out cool. the difference. All right, that should be pretty good then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So you like those sweet roasting peppers, I, I see. I do, yeah. <laughs> All right, now what about those hot peppers, though? Do you grow yeah. them those? Um, I, I grow them. I can't say that uh, I'm as much of a hot pepper okay. aficionado, but, um, but we grew some beautiful jalapenos last mm. year, and we have some good options for bacterial leaf spot good. resistance in those yeah. as well. Emerald Fire is one that performed well. I think it was the highest yielding. Um, jalapeno in my trials last year, bacterial leaf spot resistant, a yeah. recent All-American Selections winner. Spicy Slice is another one like that. Uh, that, uh, that did pretty well in our trials. So those are, those are good productive options. And then as far as kind of some novelty hot peppers, um, one, of the, one of the favorites of, um, that I've grown over the last few years is called Mad Hatter. Mad Hatter. Yeah, I mean, you gotta love the name, but <laughs> it's, the uh, it's called a Bishop's Crown. So it has uh, almost like a inverted hat okay. <laughs> shape. Right. And uh, the pepper itself is not too hot, but as you get in closer to where the seeds are in the center 
of the fruit, you start getting a little bit of heat, but it's supposed mm -hmm. to be a little bit of floral and citrus, some novel <laughs> taste. It's actually um, not exactly the same uh, species as many of our regular sweet peppers. It's a little bit taller plant, oh, but it's uh, it's pretty cool. Okay, mad yeah. hatter. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. What about some of those other novelties? Uh, candy yeah. cane yeah. is one yeah. I've heard so, of before. Um, I say that it's a great option for the children or the slightly yeah. larger just, children. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's the category that I fall into. Candy cane was probably my favorite uh -huh. of the crops that we had in the trial last year. It's great for containers okay. um, as well as, you know, growing it in the open garden. It's a more compact plant, but it has variegated leaves. See, that's what I like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And so you get some white, some green, and then not surprisingly due to the name you actually get white and green stripes on those immature nice. fruit and as they nice. ripen they go from a yellow to a golden and then finally you nice. get a solid red and those are those are sweet okay peppers so what about the pretty and sweet pretty and sweet uh -huh. yeah and pretty so and sweet. lots of times we'll, we're beginning to see a little bit more of those ornamental and edible combinations many of our ornamental peppers are are hot um, but Pretty and Sweet is an example of a nice, compact, ornamental pepper that bears its fruit on the top of the plant, so you get oh, to cool. see those multicolors. They're smaller, but okay. they're sweet peppers that are, that are, uh, that are very, very edible, so good <laughs> container. Even put them in your landscape bed off. So you could do that. And you're yeah. Like, ah, I, yeah. Might, I might try something like you know, that this year. In our, uh, our warm, humid climates that we have, some it. peppers can perform well as, as landscape plants. A lot of the black pearl, black yeah, hawk, those. those dark yeah. leaf like peppers. Those. Yeah, um, New Mex Easter is a, <laughs> is a really pretty. You get a lot of almost pastel shades. Okay. These are these are not sweet peppers. Okay, these, okay. Yeah, these, these are, are hot yeah, okay. These are hot peppers. <laughs> Super chili is another example Super chili. of edible. But uh, but great decorative landscape or the garden. Mm -hmm. Those are some cool names. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. How about that? Let me ask you this before we finish up. You mentioned all American selections a couple of times. What does that mean? Oh, yeah. So that is a nationwide trialing program. Okay. And these are cultivars that are designed and sold for home gardeners. Good. So there are sites all over the country that uh, test. And we as judges send in our, um, our evaluations. And nationwide or regional, all American selections are picked. And some of our really common um, cultivars like straight eight cucumbers straight or eight. all American selections way back into the 30s. So it's a wow, good nationwide that? testing program just for gardeners. And you're one of the judges? I am. I'm a judge for the edibles. For the edibles. Yeah. So okay. a lot of the a lot of the peppers that I talk about are things that I've had the opportunity to cool. grow in their recent All American Selections winners. <laughs> wow. What if you had to judge the hot peppers <laughs> and eat some of those? How about that? It's true. Ooh. I just sit there and cry <laughs> being a dedicated judge. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, Dr. Nell. It's good information. Yeah, appreciate thanks that. Thanks a lot. All right. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. To find out more information on this topic, just click on the familyplotgarden.com link in the description.